Greetings, it's the captain here, and I am at Marshall HQ with the lovely Chris George, uh, who I've known for a long time, ever since he was uh, guitarist of the year for something way back when. Which is a very long time ago, yeah. Yes. I'm and, not so young now, yeah. Uh, and Chris uh, does all the artist demonstrations and product demonstrations, rather, for Marshall, as well as, more recently, last two or three years, been involved in um, developing new stuff for yeah. Marshall. And that is why we are here today. Astoria. Astoria. Yeah. Which is, uh, do you want a bit of backstory? I mean, yeah, what's the deal? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I know, you know, <clears throat> pretend that I haven't known about this secret goings on for the last two or three years. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, tell us, tell us a bit about Astoria. So the, the idea was, um, you know, as with everything, we took a good, good look at what we have and mm -hmm. what we don't have and what is going on out there. And so one of the things that, that we realized was, you know, looking at the market and looking at the growing trend of boutique amps and stuff like that, which are yeah. very much dominated by the American amplifier companies, although there's some are. really good British yeah. ones as well. Um, it was to offer something in that, primarily that area, but also to appease the guys who get sort of sick and tired of our old 50-year-old design amplifiers that we have, you know, yeah. because anything that we had to compete in that area was a blues breaker or a 1974 yeah. X and they're great amps. There's nothing wrong with them, yeah. but they have been around, like I say, yeah. 50 plus years, you know? So the idea was to, again, look at what the trend was uh, and to try and have something that fits in a modern hand wired amplifier yeah. range uh, that were all a practical output, but also all had their own um, personality to them as well. Guys who want to, who just want sort of more natural tone and, yeah. and, Strip down features. This is the thing for them. Because yeah? therein lies the irony of what is a modern boutique amplifier. And in fairness, most modern boutique amplifiers are a sort of a, um, a an attempt to sort of faithfully reproduce some of the magic that Marshall and Fender and Vox were making sure. back in the you know in the fifties and the sixties. Yeah. Um, and I would say the only thing that's probably uh, where perhaps boutique. I'm not even sure I like that word, but mm. it is, that's the word, isn't it? Sure, so we're gonna yeah, that's what word. everyone uses, yeah. Um, boutique amps, I guess, perhaps visually is perhaps where, as you say, well, certainly the Blues Breaker is, is too much of a beast to be really class as a, as a, as a, as a sort of a boutique mm -hmm. amplifier. But, but some of the smaller ones, you know, the, what's the one with the tremolo built into it as well? The, uh, the 74 has got tremolo. Oh, what's, there's a smaller one then, isn't there, than the 1087? Uh, the 2061. 2061. Tw 20 yeah. Those kind of things are almost just desperate. They, they kind of are boutique amplifiers, but just perhaps with the wrong look and missing a couple of features like right. some of the sort of switchable outputs and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and so that it, was the idea. Mm. It was to keep the, the essence and the basis of it you know, with that hand-wired yeah. side to it, but also to bring in the features um, that are much more practical that you wouldn't usually get on those types yeah. of amps too. So it's sort of marrying the two things together, yeah. um, unaffecting the tone of things, you know, are, are, like I say, more practical uh, things like power reduction and, yeah. and, you know, sort of a bass boost or bright switch or whatever on yeah. across the range. So, so kind of recognizing, I suppose, that, that as, although some of those old Marshall amplifiers are great, they were built for a time when live music was played in different mm. sort of uh, to different audiences and in different arenas. Sure. Um, and these are much more you're sort of taking into account how a modern guitar player perhaps might play smaller venues, perhaps play more at home, perhaps might mic up if he needs a bit more volume, mm. that sort of thing. So look, as you can see behind us here are um, three fabulously styled different versions of Astoria, green, red, and blue, all available as either a one by 12 combo or as a, a head with a matching um, one by 12 cabinet. Stylistically, I kind of, I, I see this, it's like there is a throwback here to really old Marshalls. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're talking about uh, the, the pre-signature kind of sure. uh, front. The block the logo, yeah. Um, but also very much a nod towards, I think, what perhaps uh, the, the sort of the where some of the, the other sort of boutique amplifiers have really uh, hit a sweet 
sort of vibe with 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 customers as guitarists come in and they just see something and they go wow oh, yeah I like that you know mm -hmm. and then, and so I kind of there is an attempt to sort of do something very different but I guess most importantly it is going to be sort of tone and features so where, where do you want to start in in the range to sort of tell people about them? well I mean I you know just briefly to touch on what you're saying about the looks on the mm -hmm. look side of things it's always worth mentioning you know you're never going to please everyone because we've got the guys out there who love Marshall in black, mm -hmm. white and gold and it should never be anything else. And then we've got the guys out there who say all Marshalls look the same. So, I mean, that was another thing about this range was it needed to have its own sonic identity, of, of yeah. course, but visually it was equally as important to make them stand out. You know, if I walk into your shop, mm -hmm. you know, and I look at all the Marshall stuff, you know, the Astoria is going to stand out. And, yeah. You know, that's going to be really eye-catching against something yeah. like a DSL. And so it should because price-wise yeah. they're completely different too, yeah. you know. Actually, this really works because you've kept, you know, you've got something of the old and something of the new. Yeah. And it's, I think it really works. I, you know, we didn't want it being pigeonholed that people would look at it, see the old logo and think, oh, it's, a, yeah. it's another reissue of something in a different box. But yeah. I think the colour scheme carries it through. Also, the fact that obviously the logo is a colour match to the amps yeah. as well as a nice touch. Yeah. And again, it was all about attention to detail. Um, yeah, visually and, and sonically as well. Yeah. yeah. Is there a, before we get on to then to the sort of tone and specs, is there a sort of a, a, a classic Marshall tie-in to the Astoria? I'm assuming, is that some sort of one of Jim's old favorite venues or something like that? <laughs> you know what? People can take it for what they want. It's oh, one of those things. It's just coincidence, it means, it? Yeah, well, it means so, it means so many different things to various people. So come on, let's, okay, let's the range. talk about stuff. So the green one, uh, do the green one that's here. what you're plugged into isn't yeah it, so this is the astoria uh classic the reason it's called the classic is is because it's much more of a classic setup it's a single channel amp all the amps in the range are 30 watts yeah they all contain the celestian cream back speaker yeah which is the h magnet one the heavy magnet yeah one. exactly okay. um it's slightly custom voiced to us and it's the only speaker that we're using this is the only range that we're using that speaker in um they've all got K kt66 valves in and all got um, power reduction too. So we'll talk about the decision to use the KT66s mm -hmm. in a minute, because that's, again, that'll be another, I, I don't think there's anything else in the range that's got, or certainly none of the, the, the range that people will be familiar with has got KT66s. No, the, the last thing we used in a production run with KT66s would have been the vintage modern, which well, is- Well, let's, uh, let's stay with that then. So mm -hmm. characteristically, um, how do you find the KT66 uh, sort of affects the tone compared to something you might more traditionally use? Yeah, I always, I always liked the 66s, but I felt sometimes there could be um, a bit too much in the bottom end, depending on what amp they're in. Mm -hmm. The reason that we chose them for this was really simple in that we AB'd it with EL34s yeah. and 66s. We did a blind test. You know, when we yeah. do a lot of testing here, yeah. we don't, or some of us don't want to know, you yeah. know, you, it doesn't want, you don't yeah. want to sway your judgment. So, um, yeah, it was a really simple AB. Yeah. We chose our favourite and it happened to be the 66s. So that's, yeah. yeah. I think that's a great way of doing it. Absolutely. I mean, no, I, because I, you don't want to be forced into a corner and mm. think, oh, you know, this would be great because I know it. perhaps it has a bit of added market and collateral because, like I say, that's the only range we're producing with yeah. those valves in as well. But you want it to be very organic to the product. And I, and I, some, I sometimes wish that, that you'd almost film some of those blind tests because right. I know when you... I've been involved again mm -hmm. where you're you're blind testing a speaker or you're blind testing yep. a, a valve and the marketing bit of your brain is going I hope it, I hope we choose the Celestian Vintage 30 to go in this because I know yeah, that's the one exactly. the customer's going to want and then you do the thing and, and it's almost like I'm, and you choose something else yeah. and you almost want to go we didn't we chose that other thing entirely mm. because that was the one we all agreed was the best sounding. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm sure you did speaker, go through that. Yeah, absolutely. The speaker can be the hardest thing as well. Like yeah. with this a couple of years ago, we went to Celestian. Yeah. You know, we went to their place and they've got this great room uh, where you can just go and sound test everything, you know, like the equivalent of in yeah. here. And they set up all these speakers and you're just so spoiled for choice yeah. because there's not a bad one in the bunch. And then, and then you go slightly blind because on a clean sound, one this one sounds good and exactly. then on a medium driven exactly. and, then, you know, and you're yeah. going, ah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, so that's cool. But so talk about the output. So you've gone 30 watts, yep. which is, um, I, I would say it's the, it's the new 100 watts, isn't yeah, it? 30 absolutely. watts. It's like it, that for the modern day guitar player that's, that's uh, really doing anything, either playing large venues and miking up or yep. playing smaller venues and just, you know, needing enough power. 30 watts is just bonus, yeah. isn't it? And we, look, we all like 100 watts yeah. and we've all been doing 100 watts for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, it gets to a point where it's about practicality at yeah. the end of the day. And it's also about, 
you know, that whole thing of a lot of time people think 50 watts is half the audible output of 100 yeah. watts, and it's not. No. And nor is 30 watts, no. you know, you know, three tenths of 100 watts. It's not yeah. that at all. And so 30 watts is a really nice area where it's not as loud as 50 watts, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you get a nice singing sort of, still nice loud. bit of compression. You, yeah. yeah, exactly. Still loud. Yeah. Loud enough to gig with unmiked. Yeah. Yeah. Great for the studio. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But for those uh, players out there that are thinking, you know, I'm probably going to be 75% playing at home, 25% playing mm -hmm. on the stage, whatever. You've got power scaling in this. Yeah, so we put the power reduction in them as well, which works off the master volume pot. So tell us that, because I, I know... Um, Power reduction, power scaling, whatever you want to call it, attenuation, mm -hmm. been super, super popular for, for a few years now. And I've heard it done brilliantly, and I've heard it done appallingly. Sure. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I'm interested, I suppose, you know, sorry for sort of geeking out, but I'm kind of interested in how they do this. And, I, and I'd like to kind of almost hear it as well, because sure. I, I sort of think it's, you know, what you don't want power reduction to do is suck all the life out of the amplifier to make it quieter. No, that's right. And that's what you're always, I think... Uh, naturally and again orga organically you're always going to be up against that mm -hmm. you know I don't think anyone has anyone got it 100% perfect yet I'm not sure but I, th I think the, the best ones I've heard are where guitar players use attenuation to to roll back their amp by 30 or 40 percent volume yeah. so you get a crazy loud mm -hmm. sound that you just bring back to a sort of controllable sound yeah that's right to get right down low is always tough because I guess you're just not getting the speaker movement That's right. and exactly yeah and all those things that make the final sound mm. uh, the, you know the combination but we, we should hear it anyway we should we, we should definitely sort of... and it works this one works off of the um the master volume it's not pento trial or anything mm -hmm. like that we wanted something that was again much more practical in that you have you hear a, a big sonic difference kind of thing mm -hmm. so um to give you an idea um so the master's set on three quarters at the moment and this is the sort of sound you get so what you do is you pull out the master oh, okay. volume there, yeah. so, and then of course it drops into power reduction mode. And you can still use the master volume any way you want, but now it's just dropped down. And then just for reference, going back up again. So it's not a it's not a variable power reduction it's just a, it's a it's a sort of low and high type switch, low, low and high but then you can still use the master volume in conjunction in low mode yeah exactly yeah, i see exactly so you can yeah. take it right down if you want i mean it's certainly on, on i mean we should probably try it on all three exactly. as we sort of go yeah. through because that one you could hear there was a little bit less gain yep. as well than when you went into power reduction yeah. mode that's it, the nature of this amplifier as well at the same time though right. when we get onto the other two you'll hear that it doesn't sort of take so much yeah. off the top and stuff like that. Um, but we'll, we'll try that. So put it back into sort of low. Well, no, I think we'll wait till we get one of the gainier okay. amps and then yep. we'll, we'll give the power reduction a bit more. Because I think on cleaner amplifiers, you can just back the volume down and right. it still exactly. sounds fine. But for consistency, yeah. we wanted to put it on all three. Yeah. So what else have we got knobs and buttons wise on? Uh, uh, this, probably, this is the classic, right? This is the, the classic. So yeah, yeah. one channel. Um, that's why it's called the classic because it's just a, a one channel relatively clean amp like the yep. amount of um, overdrive that you were hearing there or the amount of gain that you were hearing there is about it's about as much as it will do oh really yeah so, so this would be like a great pedal amp if you've got exactly sort of drive pedals and that's the idea you know that if you've got your own pedals uh, your own nice pedals that you really yeah. like you can put it in front to to drive it and get it going um do it do we want to hear that do we, we want to hear do. should we just grab a blues breaker pedal is you know they, I, I spotted one over your shoulder over yep. there should we just give this a yeah I'll, why not i'll, I'll get it okay. we're back uh, this is the most excellent Marshall Blues Breaker 2 pedal that we have set in boost mode rather than sort of drive mode with all the knobs on it. If you've got one of these are uh, about halfway except for the volume which is about three quarters. But listen to this. So this is without. And this is with. And it's fairly inexpensive, the pedal, you know? It's, yeah, I mean, it, we could have pulled out yeah. a 150-pound boost pedal if yeah. we wanted to, but Clown that's... Centaur uh, or something. Yeah. Like. Oh, man, that's a sexy sound in amplifier. Well, you're in the high mode. I, I know it's, each of these amps have got high and low. Is that the same sort of idea as any Marshall amp that you'd be familiar with? So just, is it like a 3 or 6 dB? Yeah, I think it's about 6 dB. 6 dB yeah. attenuation on the low. Yeah, so if you're really quite particular, 
on this amplifier yeah. on the classic about keeping it clean and, yeah. and keeping it uh you know not broken up then you'd be better off going to the low and one thing we haven't mentioned is just the sensitivity control which it's got which um okay. just allows is that, you is that instead of gain or as well as yeah gain? so you've got um oh, we'll, we'll do a scanning close-up-y thing of yeah, this here exactly so. But the edge, bass, middle, treble, sensitivity, master. Right. Yeah. So some couple of couple of controls that people might not be familiar with. This. So. Yeah. So uh, again, the edge control features on all of them, and mm -hmm. that's uh, people like one of the big questions is what's the difference between edge and presence because it kind of works. Edge is in a better guitarist, way. I think, isn't he? Yeah, well, I don't know. Like I've always liked presence. Album. Yeah. yeah, he did go downhill after yeah, that. I think so. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we. Um, so the way that presence works is that it adjusts the um, negative feedback within the power stage of an amplifier. And so with Astoria, there's yeah. no negative feedback. So there is a, um, a high pass filter in there. And I've found with these actually, it's a lot more practical because you know, usually presence you'll just leave. Yeah. You know, you just set it and leave about halfway or something yeah. like that. With these, with the edge controls I've found more on the high, high gain amps, if okay. you turn it back, you get much more of a darker sort of almost mm. woolly tone, which is quite nice. Should cool. you need it? So. Okay, so um, Chris is gonna play for 30 seconds or so on here. And just because I'm interested in what the controls do, and I expect you guys are too as well, uh, I'm just gonna have a fiddle. A fiddle with the knobs uh, whilst Chris is playing. So uh, anyway, come here. Cool. So that was really, really useful, I thought, there, especially I think it, what it does is it, it the, the, the bass, middle, and treble is very familiar Marshall sort mm -hmm. of territory, um, not massively changing no, no. the characteristic of the tone. Uh, edge does exactly what you said it does, and sensitivity is absolutely kind of like a, like a low gainy kind of mm. uh, sort of gain and presence and all in one. So sure. really like that. So that's, that's the Astoria classic. Yep. Um, Nothing else to really tell us about that. If we haven't already driven it home, I'm pretty sure we have. These are all hand-wired um, in the Marshall factory in Milton Keynes. Um, so let's move on to which one next? Do you want to do the blue one next? Because it's the sort of the, the next most gainy and we'll finish with the most gainy. Yeah, or? if you want to, we can do it that way, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so the concept behind the Astoria Jewel is... For the two channel guy. Yeah. Yeah. You want a clean channel, you want an overdrive channel. Um, there is also a body control on the overdrive channel and a very nice clean channel as well. You know, it's got the edge, it's got the power reduction, etc. Yeah. etc. But yeah. um, pretty much speaks for itself. Foot switchable two yeah. channels. KT sixty six is again in yep. this. So okay, cool. Kind of same idea as what we just did for the classic. So Chris will play, I'll fiddle with the knobs. Play a bit for long we'll play a little bit longer on this one because there are more knobs to fiddle with. Here we go. Um.
I like. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, it, yeah. it's the, okay. the, the, the... i tell you what I did notice, a couple of things that react really differently to the classic. The power scaling reacts yep. massively more. Mm -hmm. um, I quite like as well. Well, I say I like. No, that's, that's the wrong word. It's interesting that what's happening when you're pulling the, the, the power scaling in or pushing it back in again, there's like a there's like a two or three second. That's or, right. You hear it just drop. Yeah. Down. yeah. So clearly it's, it's so it's obviously going through some sort of reduction and then ramp up again, isn't it? Rather so than just a straight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 when you get the, the overdriven channel around about sort of two thirds of the way, and particularly with the body control, which, yeah, is, exactly. which is where you, 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 I don't know if you noticed, but on the, the gain gets pulled out for this, this feature called body. Mm -hmm. It's fat, isn't Yeah, it? really fat. And also when you go over to the overdrive channel, if you've got the gain set quite low, as with a lot of amps like that, they, it sounds good, but it sounds a little empty. Mm. As soon as you pull the body control, it just fattens it up. Mm. You know, even with high gain, as high as that will go, the body is really fat. Mm. Might be too much for some, but then you just take it back out. So again, right. it's just variation yeah. of tone. And in terms of the voice and of the overdrive channel of that, you'll hear it is different from, right. from the one that we'll look at after. Yeah, it's and very, it's not, very vintage Marshall. Exactly. It's not mm. like there's huge amounts of gain in there, but mm. enough for the yeah. majority of people, especially for all the rhythmic stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was the blue amp was the one I was using during the sort of the jam we had. Mm. And uh, I had it with uh, the gain about two thirds of the way out. And I didn't have the body control out because at that time I, did, I didn't know how to body control. Uh, but it, it had that, you know, again, just how you, how you remember all the old classic old strats plugged into a dirty sure. Marshall sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I liked it. So, I, I mean, the blue one is, is, is my favorite so okay. far. Um, although I don't know, I have got a little penchant for just single channel amplifiers sure. that you put loads of pedals in front of at the moment. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. if I was a, a pedal guy, I can see why the green one would be popular. Right. But if I was more of just a, you know, just a straightforward plug-in. Can you foot switch the yep. channel switch switch channels here? And also, uh, as with the the custom as well, the effects loop too. Okay, so effects loop in here as well, yeah? Yep. Yeah, effects loop in that, yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, we may need to take a small intermission now whilst we mic up the red one, but uh, stay tuned because next is uh, is essentially the same thing again, but with the, the dirtiest one, isn't it? That's right. Bit, need to give it a bit. Well, I wasn't sure whether I just wanted to keep an eye on the level. Yeah. Holy mother of Mary. Um, Chris has just played a chord which you didn't hear, but you're about to hear through the classic. Um, custom. It's custom, sorry. Through the custom. It's unbelievably loud. Uh, we just made him turn it down because it nearly killed me. Um, so the custom is the dirty one, isn't it? Yeah. It's the dirty, it's, it's the evil, it's the nasty neighbor. It's a J1, it will go, it will do all your crunch stuff, you Along know. with the Asbo. Exactly. But it will go up um, to, uh, it will go up loud, it will go up heavy and lots of gain. And there's a bright switch, there's a body switch. It's got, you know, it's got everything you want, really. Well, we're, we're going to do the same thing again, basically, where, where I crouch down and um, fiddle with some knobs on here. Um, it's, the, it's again, it's simple, isn't it? It's one, one channel with a boost. Exactly. Uh, effects loop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, switchable it's, it's, boost and effects loop on this one. Foot switchable. You gotta hear this. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, man. <clears throat> The things we do in this job to mm. bring you the best tones of all the guitar amps in the world. Um, wow. Yeah, it's That's good. That's loud. It? Yeah, that it is. That is really yeah. good. I tell you what, you, you said on the other amplifier that the, the, the body control really works well with the gain with the volume reduction. Yep. So I hopefully you guys pick that up on there. But but at the lowest point, I know it's always difficult on YouTube, but at, but at its lowest point, we were actually pretty quiet on that. Yeah. And the body when you do pull it out, does act almost like a, a loudness switch on a hi-fi, you know, it just adds that sort of depth back in mm. where perhaps the amp isn't naturally producing it because it's not loud enough. But that's just naughty, isn't it? I mean, it what is, is yeah. there not to like? If you're a Marshall fan, there is nothing not to like sure. about that sound. I mean, even unboosted, you know, there's, there's still a lot of gain. I mean, that's set on about six. <laughs> Tonally it's good, but I mean to give you an idea of how much gain is, is in it turning that up and with the boost and you can hear it right? <laughs> Just yeah, you don't you that's really great. don't need to fight for feedback. It just that does it all for you, great. isn't it? Yeah, that is that's just. I mean, and actually, when I say it's really loud, it, it's it's not like sitting in front of a hundred watt super lead. No, this. It, it, it's um it's loud enough to be. We could be gigging at that kind of volume, of course. Uh, and obviously, I'm sitting really really close to it. But it sounds great. Can I hear it with a? I just want to try it with a strap. Definitely. I'm afraid, as you've probably noticed, Chris plays the guitar the wrong way up. <laughs> so uh, I'm afraid in order to demonstrate a strat, you're going to have to hear, uh, listen to a slightly inferior guitar player. <laughs> um, but I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> Tens, by the way, just for Mick Taylor because he said I was something if I use nines. That's what the best thing about guitar amplifiers is how every guitar kind of sounds different. Or well, the best thing about good guitar amplifiers is where you just pick stuff up. Yeah. And it's like all the goodness of your guitar. You and hear the guitar again. Yeah, yeah, everything exactly. that, you know, I can imagine everything that Leo and Jim wanted sure. to happen happens. And still um, happen, yeah. Yeah. God, this is the beast. <laughs> should be here you need to be here <laughs> with this or something similar that sounds amazing that and was. this or this or this that's proper mmm that's proper oh there we are you see this is a, this is a face of a, of a child in a sweetie shop basically. so if you had to choose one which which one would be yours oh that's tough you know I because 
I mean, this is going to sound like the worst sales pitch in the universe. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of currently uh, experimenting the whole two amp thing. You okay. Know, the sort of two amp is better than one thing. And um, getting some kind of great results using stuff like um, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe and a Marshall DSL nice. or something if you're yeah. on a, a budget. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. just a couple of very different voiced amps. So honestly, I guess if, if it was like you can have one, if you can hear drums in the background, say hello to George. Um, if I had to have one, I guess the obvious one to buy is the blue one because it's the dual channel, okay. does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, can see that being as a yeah. you know, good club gigging kind of guitar amp. I think if you're, what I actually do quite like is I, I, can, I don't think there's going to be one of these that doesn't appeal because I think, you know, the green one absolutely is going to be your, the guy that just goes, look, I've, just got, I've got some killer pedals I want to plug in. I don't believe in effects loops. It's all wizardry and they didn't have them back in the day, so sure. I don't need one now. That's the green one. Sure. The guy that's just going, you know, I, I want, when I think of, of Marshall, I think of Gary Moore and Slash and, you know, those kind of iconic drive players. They want this one. Sure. And they will not be disappointed because <laughs> this is a good amp. Um, and then I don't know, I think the guy that's just going, do you know what, I, I, I'm just looking for a boutique amplifier. I want something that's hand wired, relatively portable, looks sexy, mm. and is going to do, it's going to give me some nice clean tones, some nice driven tones. I can channel switch. I've got an effects loop on there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I suppose it, it, if it's got a Marshall throwback, it's going to be vintagey Marshall. It's not sure. sort of modern Marshall. What about if you've got a 4x12 anywhere? Yes. So we could do that? Of course. Okay. Well, do you want to hear? Do you want to hear this amp? This head here through a four by twelve. Say yeah, that's a yes. I think somebody said no, but we'll ignore them. Um, let's do that then. So anyway, uh, we are going to play out. I think with Chris George, the amazing Chris George, <laughs> guitarist of the year in 1973, <laughs> runner up. Feels like it. <laughs> runner up. Um, <laughs> Um, so I've been the captain. Thank you so much to Chris and the guys at Marshall for inviting us up to HQ today. Uh, and I will see you next time.